This is part 2 of Angular CRUD tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss performing the read operation in Angular. In our upcoming videos, we'll discuss performing the rest of the CRUD operations, that is, creating, updating, and deleting. Now, let's understand performing the read operation with an example. Here is what we want to do. We want to retrieve and display the list of employees, as you can see right here. At the moment, we don't have a model for representing our employee. So let's create an employee class with all these properties, that is name, gender, date of birth, etc. So let's flip over to Visual Studio Code. Let's place all our models in a folder called Models. And let's place this folder inside the App folder. So I'm going to right click on the App folder and then add a new folder. Let's name it Models. And let's add a new file to the models folder. And we are creating a model for employee. So let's name this file employee.model.ts. And this is how the employee class looks like. Notice it has got several properties like ID, name, gender, etc. ID is of type number, name is of type string, gender is also string, and we have email which is of type string, but notice we have a question mark at the end of the property name. So basically this question mark indicates that this property is optional. So we can either provide a value for email or phone number. Notice both of those properties are made optional by including a question mark at the end of the property name. And then we have contact preference. So basically this property specifies whether we want the employee to be contacted either by email or phone number. So this basically specifies what is their contact preference. And then we have date of birth which is of type date and the department they belong to, whether the employee is active or is he terminated, and then photo path. So if you look at the page right here, notice we are displaying the employee photo. So this photo path property specifies where that photo is coming from. At the moment, within our project, we don't have a folder called images. I'm going to create images folder inside this assets folder. So let's right click on the assets folder and add a new folder. Let's name it images. And inside this images folder, I'm going to include our employee images. They are already present right here. I will have them available on my blog in case you need to download them. So let's copy these images and paste them within the images folder right here. So let's reveal this images folder in file explorer and then paste all of our images in that folder. Next, let's create list employees component to display the list of employees. Now to create the component, I'm going to use Angular CLI. Notice within the command prompt, I'm already in the project folder. So I'm going to use this command to create the list employees component. NG for Angular CLI itself, G for generate, C for component, and I'm going to call our component list employees. And I want this component to be placed inside the employees folder. So I'm going to prefix that folder name. At the moment, within our project, we don't have that employees folder. So we want that employees folder to be created and we're going to place all of our employee CRUD related components in that employees folder. So that's the reason we prefix the employees folder name right here. And then we don't want spec files to be generated. So I'm going to set dash dash spec to false and I'm also going to set dash dash flat to true. Basically what happens by default is Angular CLI is going to place the component files in its own dedicated folder but we don't want that. We want all of our employee CRUD components to be placed in this employees folder. So we want that component to be placed flat in that folder without its own dedicated folder. So let's go ahead and press enter. This is going to create our list employees component. There we go. Our component is created. Notice it has created the component TypeScript file, the view template, and the CSS file. And these three files are placed in the employees folder inside the app folder. So if we take a look at Visual Studio Code, notice within the app folder we have got employees folder and within that we have the three component files, the TypeScript file, the HTML and CSS. And if we go back to the command prompt, notice it not only created these three component files, it has also updated the root module, app module. So if we take a look at 
app.module.ts notice it has included the required import statement to import list employees component and has also made it part of the declarations array of our at ng module decorator if we take a look at the list employees component TypeScript file, notice it has also linked the template file right here using the template URL property and it has also linked the CSS file using the styles URLs property. And look at the amount of boilerplate code the Angular CLI has given us out of the box which otherwise we would have to write manually and imagine the amount of time it takes. So I personally think Angular CLI is one of the tools that we should know how to use it so we can be as productive as possible. Next, we need to retrieve employees data and display that using the list employees component that we have just created. In a typical real world application, we retrieve the employees data from a database table. But for now, let's hard code the employees data within our list employees component. In our upcoming videos in this series, we'll discuss how to retrieve employees data from a database table. So within our list employees component, I'm going to include a property. I will call it employees because it's going to hold the list of employees. And the type for this is going to be employee array. Remember this employee class that we have created? So here is that employee class with all those properties. So this property is of type employee array. So let's create a new array here and this is going to contain our list of employees. I'm going to hard code three employees data right here. So we have our first employee whose name is Mark, his ID is one, gender is male, his contact preference is email. So he has provided his email ID, date of birth. So here we first specify the month, date and then the year. His department is ID, is active, is of type boolean. So we specify true or false if the employee is active. We set that to true and photo path. The photo for this employee is coming from the images folder inside the assets folder. And within the images folder, we have mark.png. So if we look at the images folder, we have mark.png. Similarly, we have employee two who is Mary, employee three who is John. This is how we want to display employees data. So we are going to use Bootstrap for styling. Within our list employees component view template, let's do the required changes. Delete the default HTML that we have here. And then let's include a development. We're going to use Bootstrap panels to style the display like this. So if you're new to Bootstrap, please check out our Bootstrap course. So on this development, I'm going to use two Bootstrap classes. The first one is panel and the second one is panel primary. Both these classes are being used for styling the panels. And then we're going to use the Angular ng4 structural directive to loop over the list of employees. Notice within our list employees component, we have this property employees, which contains an array of employee objects. So at the moment within the array, we got three employee objects. We want to loop over those three employee objects. So we are using the Angular ng4 structural directive. So we are going to loop over the list of employees that we have in this property employees. Now at the moment we don't have word wrap turned on. So let's turn on word wrap. To turn on word wrap, go to the view tab and then select toggle word wrap. So this is going to automatically wrap the code when it flows off the screen. In the panel heading, we want to display the employee name. So if we go back to the slides, notice within the panel heading, we have the employee names. So to get that panel heading, I'm going to use another development inside this development. And we're going to use another bootstrap CSS class here. And this class is panel heading. We are using this again for styling. Inside this development, we are going to use an H3 element and we are going to use this H3 element to display the name of the employee within the panel heading. And to get the name of the employee, we are going to use this variable employee and we are using Angular interpolation here. And we know the employee object has got the name property, which is going to display that name property within the H3 element here. And for styling again on this H3 element, I'm going to use another bootstrap class and that is panel dash title. 
Now we discussed interpolation and Angular NG for structural directive in detail in our Angular 2 tutorial. So if you're new to both of those concepts, please check Angular 2 course. Next we want to display employee photo and his details within the panel body. So after panel heading div, we're going to include another div element here and the class on this is going to be panel dash body again this is the bootstrap class for styling and inside this panel body I'm going to create a column that's going to be 10 units wide so I'm going to use this class call dash access dash and we want this column to be 10 units wide inside this column let's create a row for that we're using the bootstrap row class and this row is going to contain two columns we're going to use the first column to display the employee photo and the second column to display the employee details. The first column will be four units wide and the second column will be eight units wide. So let's create those two columns in this row. For that, we are going to create another development and change the class on this development to four because we want that column to be four units wide. Let's create another column and we want this column to be eight units wide and in the first column we want to display the employee photo so let's use the image element and bind to its source property so here we're using property binding we discussed angular property binding in detail in our angular 2 course so we want to bind the source property of the image element to the photo path property of the employee object next Inside this column that is eight units wide, I want to create a row. So let's make a copy of this development and paste it right here. And we want this row to contain two columns. The first column is going to display the field names, that is gender, date of birth, etc. And the second column is going to display the values, male, date of birth, value, etc. So we want each column within that row to be six units wide. So let's create a development and use this class call dash access dash six. And let's make a copy of this because we want two columns each six units wide. And in the first column, we want to display the property name. So first we want to display gender. So I'm going to type that like that gender and then here we are going to display the gender property value again we are going to use interpolation for that so let's use this double curly braces and just before displaying the value we want to display this colon symbol as well so let's include a colon before the interpolation so now we are displaying gender in addition to gender we want the other properties so we need to include this same row for every property that we have. In the interest of time, I'm going to copy and paste the code that we have. I mean, the code is going to be exactly similar, but it's going to be for different properties that we have, date of birth, contact preference, etc. So let's paste that code right here. So here we are binding to is active property, department, email, etc. And we actually have a typo here. We want to display gender property value so the field name here is gender so we don't want name to be displayed for gender so let's correct this the property name is gender one thing to note here is that we're using the date pipe right here to format the display of date of birth again we discussed pipes in detail in our angular 2 course finally let's take our list employees component selector which is app dash list dash employees and then include that as a directive in our root component so here is our root component view template let's open that and i'm going to replace all this html with our list employees component selector as a directive and then let's run this project so let's go back to the command prompt and then execute this command ng serve dash o there we go. We have the list of employees displayed, but the images are too big. Let's limit the height and width of the image element to 200 pixels. 
For that, within the list employee component CSS file, let's include an image class we have set width and height to 200 pixels and let's use this class on the image element within our list employees component view template. So on the image element right here, let's use that image class which limits the height and width to 200 pixels. So the name of our class is image class. Let's copy that and specify it right here. Save our changes. There we go. We have the employee photo displayed as expected. Now I'm going to make one more change within the root component. So I'm going to place this directive inside the development with class container. This container class is a bootstrap class. Again, we are using that class for styling. Notice now the bootstrap panels are not occupying the entire width of the browser. We have one more display problem here. Notice these employee details, they are not vertically aligned in the center. To align them in the center, I'm going to include another CSS class within our list employee component CSS file. Let's name this class vertical dash align. We have set display to flex and we are center aligning the items. Let's use this vertical align class in our list employees component view template. So on this development that has the row class, I am going to use this vertical align class. Let's save our changes. Notice now we have the employee data center aligned as expected. So we have just seen how to perform the read operation. In our next video, we'll discuss how to set up routing in Angular. Thank you for listening and have a great day.